Hello, hola, hola a todos. Hola, amigos. Hola, amigas, dear friends from all over the world. Welcome to today's event, today's history lecture from home here in Lima, Peru. It is my pleasure to have you in each occasion revising, checking together chapters of the history of Peru that are most of the times unknown, even by the very Peruvians. As a tour guide, I am a licensed tour guide here in Lima, Peru. I have discovered that most of the times travelers that come from all over the world have an image or maybe information about Peru that is really not exactly complete. So as a tour guide also, I think we all guys are ambassadors of our countries and our cities, cities around the world. We have this duty to inform, uh, to be educators as well. Uh, so Hego has been a blessing to me and also for all of this community. We have learned so much from, from different parts of the world thanks to our wonderful Hego guides. So in today's occasion, we are going to talk about a chapter of the history, not just of Peru, of the Americas that remains sort of like pretty much unknown by, by most people. Uh, so we're going to talk about the extinct dogs or the indigenous dogs of the uh, Americas and in focus or with a, a detailed focus in the indigenous dogs of Peru. So, well, before we begin, let me say hi to all the people joining. Thanks so, so much for coming today. Thanks for visiting my home here in Lima. So let me say hi to all of you. Hola, Maggie. Thanks for coming. Hola, Marilyn. Thanks for visiting today. Cari, Cari, hola, hola. CCD, hello. Thanks for coming. Hola, Jay. Como estas? Susan, hola. Hi, hi, Robert. Hello, hi, Brenda. Hi, Grace. Hello, Pam and Ellie. Hola, hola. And the cat. Hola, hola. <laughs> hello, hello, amigos. Caroline, uh, thanks for visiting. Also, Lima, Diane. So, well, um, we are going now to, to begin this virtual uh, adventure. As always, we have different kinds of adventures. Sometimes we go out uh, to the city and, and we get to see parks and gardens and beautiful architecture. And sometimes we can be invited at the house of our Hego guides to talk about about history. So, well, uh, before I begin with this event uh, dedicated to the indigenous dogs of Peru, uh, let me first of all thank uh, all of you, all of your presence. It really means a lot to me that you are here today uh, in, in Lima virtually, uh, and also in particular to my wonderful sponsors who are here. Um, thanks a lot for, for coming and for your support, which is very important. The sponsorship program of Hague has allowed us tour guides from all over the world to continue creating events every month uh, because this support is, is permanent. So if you wish to become a sponsor uh, of my channel, please wait until the end of this event so I can give you um, also information in detail and what you can be given if you help me uh, support supporting this channel. So muy bien amigos, let's begin with this tour and I will turn the light uh, off. I will flip the camera to the other side and we're going to talk about the indigenous dogs of Peru uh, many of them also extinct uh, breeds of dogs. So um, we're going to learn together why it's so important to uh, also uh, understand you know the 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 presence of the dogs in, in pre-Hispanic Peru. Um, you probably, if you've seen already my tours, you've been here with me in Lima when we talk about the colonial history um, or maybe, let's say, the, the history before the Spanish. I always mention, you know, like this, this, um, th this word, no, pre-Hispanic, you know, as a very important sort of like division in our timeline, in the history of the Americas. Uh, that could be also, you know, pre-colonial. Some, some people call it, call it pre-colonial. Some people call it pre-Hispanic. Um, in Peru, we tend to call it pre-Hispanic because the Hispanics, the Spanish, were the ones who conquered Peru. And they mark, a, you know, a, a, 
let's say a cut in in the history of the country, which is really not a cut like a, a complete. Uh, cut, but it is a transformation. It is a time of transformation. We are no longer the children of the Incas, for example. We are no longer the children of the uh, indigenous uh, only. We are mixed, you know, and not just we humans are mixed, also our dogs are mixed too. <laughs> so here we can see a uh, uh, piece of pottery, a pre-Hispanic piece of pottery uh, that dates back uh, to the ancient pre-Hispanic era. We're talking about the Mochica culture in the north coast of Peru, in which we can see a, a pretty dog. But this is not a dog you're going to probably, uh, you know, find in, in Europe. You know, it's not a European breed of dog because it's an endemic uh, indigenous dog of, of Peru, of this territory. So why is it important to understand the dogs and learn the history of the dogs of this part of the world? Um, well, first of all, uh, the pre-Hispanic men consider uh, the endemic animals, the indigenous animals, uh, a, a type of link to, to the you know, godly world. They were uh, animals who were considered connectors with this world uh, of the unseen, the world of the gods. And one of those uh, animals was the dog. We know that in the pre-Hispanic times, for example, um, there was a belief uh, around the, the passing to the afterlife uh, in which um, the, the understanding was that a dog was the one that took uh, people to the afterlife. There are some legends in which we know that uh, the belief was that people cross to the afterlife in company and guided by dogs, and in particular, black dogs. So this is very, very interesting. Um, so there were many different breeds of dogs, uh, but unfortunately, we are not able to say how many of those breeds existed it is impossible for us to know. Because, um, well, during the, the conquest period, new varieties of dogs came uh, and, well, there was also a, a devastation of, of the indigenous varieties of dogs, not just because of the, the differences between the European dogs who came or were brought by the conquistadors, which we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but also diseases. Uh, new diseases, like as well as we humans were affected by the new diseases that were introduced during the conquest, animals as well, and in particular dogs, uh, were affected by new types of diseases uh, that the European dogs were immune to, uh, and they were transporting with them without sometimes, of course, uh, being uh, unknown, no, these diseases. Also, uh, because these diseases manifested in, in the new world, but they spread fast among the uh, indigenous dogs. Um, so here you can see, again, two potteries. Notice here these pretty doggies. And what I find also interesting is that the pre-Hispanic societies represented in potteries, sometimes in fabrics, uh, in, in different forms of art, even in, in walls, for example, in, in walls of temples, uh, elements of, you know, like the magical world, the afterlife, you know, that were related with the gods, but also elements who were, you know, very common that were of the daily life of people. Like, for example, in these two potteries you see here, we can notice dogs, but in a very casual situations, like, uh, you know, very domestic situations. Uh, so one dog just standing there, posing uh, beautifully. And in the other vessel, we can see uh, a female dog, uh, which is breastfeeding her uh, puppies, right? Um, there were different forms of uh, let's say representation of dogs in the pre-Hispanic times, and to be honest, you know, like uh, the the now that the archaeologists have been able to investigate lots of um, cemeteries, and were able to find in some of those cemeteries um, accompanying the dead 
uh, the, the, the tombs of important leaders, dogs by their side. So we know that dogs were not just one more animal or one domesticated animal, you know, one more of the, of the many uh, people in this part of the world had. We know also that they were very close to humans, very, very important to humans. So we're going to revise also other aspects about, you know, like uh, the canines, uh, the doggies. Um, also, in a moment, I'm going to be answering questions. Oh, Gregory, excellent. Thanks for letting me also know uh, a question. I'm going to boil your question in a moment. Just to let you know uh, about the history of the uh, endemic dogs of Peru, we need to know exactly you know, in which time of the history of, you know, humanity, dogs came to South America. Uh, we know that they came also, like, with humans. So dogs were, um, as other types of animals, you know, like, uh, originated in other parts of the world. They have a common ancestor uh, that links them with the um, wolves, right? And that probably they cross the Verne Strait uh, land a bridge uh, to North America. Uh, we're talking about probably about 30,000 years ago. Uh, and they came with humans later. So that's how they came, you know, down to South America. And they adapted to this territory differently according to the climatic conditions, of course, to the territory. Um, so said this, I'm going to now board the question of our friend Gregory. Thank you, Gregory, for your question. Do you have a contemporaneous word from those times to call them dogs or are they referred to by a later word taken from Spanish? Gregory, thanks for your question. And yes, indeed. Um, as you know, probably you know, uh, pre -Hispanic, um, the pre-Hispanic times here in Peru, um, are really not a um, sort of like times in which just one society, one, you know, like a, a language, one religion existed. No, uh, Peru had uh, several different languages before the coming of the Spanish. Actually, when the Spaniards came, they met here because one ruling group, the Incas, but, um, and they used the Quechua. Quechua language is the, was the Frank language of these territories. But um, there were other languages, right? There were other languages in Peru. And um, Quechua was used sort of like a, a way to, to communicate between communities that were very distant and they just had, you know, that language in common, but they had their own religions, their own traditions. Oh, by the way, thanks so much to the people joining. We're talking about the indigenous dogs of Peru. Uh, and also we're going to talk about extinct dogs of Peru in a moment. I'm, I'm also answering the question of our friend Gregory. So, um, for example, in the endemic or indigenous uh, languages, there were many different forms to refer to dogs. In the coast of Peru, the word to dog was biringo. Biringo. That was the, the, the word used to refer to dogs. Uh, in the Andes, uh, uh, where the Quechua language, you know, was spoken also or was more common, the word to refer to dogs was alco, right? So they are not similar, as you can see, uh, because those languages, uh, uh, the, co the coastal language that I'm referring to is the Muchik language uh, and the Quechua language, they are completely different. Mm. Uh, Muchik language is uh, is considered an extinct language, right? Um, thank you so much, Gregory, for your question. Also, amigos, if you have questions, please post them. Uh, and, and now we, we can see that when you use oh, like a, uh, the question mark, you know, the box where the, uh, the say your message is highlights in a different color, in the light blue color, which is wonderful. So I can notice the questions, okay? Um, the dog you are seeing here, amigos, is this is a recreation of a dog that is extinct now. Uh, the one behind, before, sorry, um, is a, sort of like a full image of the recreation of a dog, which was discovered in, in my city, 
uh, in, in an archaeological site in Lima, um, the investigations that um, happened during the uh, 90s uh, um, in an archaeological site uh, took archaeologists to see bones of animals, in particular bones of dogs, associated with the uh, funerary context of uh, some uh, people there. And these dogs were, we believe, like this, no? So um, we know also the color that uh, has been used to uh, recreate the uh, the fur of, of the dog uh, comes from um, documents from the colonial times in which the Spanish refer to indigenous dogs of this region that were of two colors. Uh, they were brown and they were also um, sort of like yellowish. No? Uh, and in some of these dogs, the, the um, let's say the mummies of the dogs, were also found at, um, some remains of the original hair of the dogs. So we know, you know, that probably this dog look like this. As I said before, that dog in particular that I just saw is an extinct dog. Like this one also. This is another extinct dog. Um, the conquistadors came with uh, what we call cronistas or, or chroniclers, uh, people who uh, were very, very well educated, uh, Spanish uh, Europeans who were very well educated, who uh, took notes of everything they saw during the conquest for the king, uh, for, for the king to know, able to sort of like revive you know, all the moments of the conquest. So in many of these chronicles, uh, we can also see descriptions of the fauna and this is one of the doggies that we know also existed, not just because of the chronicles, also because of potteries. Like in this case, this little puppy that you see there uh, is a very short-legged dog with spots, <laughs> uh, spots of, you know, like a dark color, could be dark brown and also whitish, you know, more whitish, um, you know, rest of the body. Um, it looks like, uh, to me, I don't know, like a chihuahua, could it be? <laughs> um, but it seems that it was like sort of like a little bit furry. Uh, so this is also a uh, pottery, a sort of or an original pottery uh, from a, an archaeological site uh, a, in the north coast of Peru. Mm -hmm. um, so doggies were very important for our indigenous uh, people. Um, first of all, there are many reasons why they were important, of course. Um, so we know that there were doggies that were company uh, doggies. So they were like, um, you know, the ones that are very close to people that are, you know, like on their in their lap, right, they, all the time. So those were the little ones, right? The ones that were protectors also uh, of their of their uh, human, you know, like uh, owners. And we had also other types of dogs. We had the shepherd dogs. Uh, remember that the pre-Hispanic people domesticated also llamas and alpacas. Um, like in Europe, you know, there, there are ships. Here in the Americas, there were different kinds of animals that some of the most developed societies domesticated. In the case of Peru, we had llamas, we had alpacas. So it was necessary, of course, that uh, the dogs would help, you know, humans in uh, keeping uh, those those uh, animals close to to their humans, right? So these were shepherd dogs, uh, like but fully, you know, like adapted to take care of uh, cameloids, American cameloids. This scene you see here was taken from a pottery, right? And this is not a shepherd dog, of course. This is a it's quite small dog. Also notice that the indigenous dogs of this territory were small. They were not big dogs. Uh, this is a an, an scene of a hunting of the deer. We had deers here in the coast of Peru. Unfortunately, most of those deers are gone, are extinct, um, because we have taken over their land. They have taken uh, over, we have taken over, you know, like uh, the, the ecosystems in which they used to live. But um, with this image, we can go back in time uh, to see how, you know, these doggies also participated on the hunting of the deer, right? You can see here, 
caza del venado, the hunting, the hunt of the deer, right? So, uh, and they were you know, brave warriors, these doggies, no? that they were also uh, side by side uh, with, um, you know, their, their owners, you know, which also were priests, Oh, because the hunting of the deer was a, a very important um, ceremony in which um, the deer was hunted not to be eaten. We know that it was more for prediction of uh, future you know, events, like climatic events. So um, somehow, like by reading, for example, the, uh, you know, the, the, insights of the animal uh, or maybe some elements that we don't know exactly that they were found it in the in the deer um well the priest will foretell and the dogs were participants active participants of those uh, scenes uh, also we have other scenes like remember these are scenes who were um, made or or inscript inscripted or draw on vessels Potteries, uh, which were deposited in tombs of very important people. Um, so they were not just common scenes, like, you know, pretty scenes that we will hang in our house for decoration. Not at all. These were magical scenes. And here we can see, of course, highlighted this pretty dog. And again, we're seeing this dog with spots, right? This is the, the dog with the dark spots that is tiny, you know, and he is there represented next to the most important leaders uh, from the uh, pre-Hispanic times. This is uh, in particular the Mochica culture, Moche culture that existed between the beginnings of Christian era and the year 700 after Christ. And we have the most important scene, which is the toasting with blood. Yes, this is blood, by the way. Give a look to the cup over here and also give a look to this Two men here, which are bleeding, they are bleeding, look at the blood coming, and the blood is being deposited in these sort of like plates. And those plates, you know, that you can see one here and one here, will be taken to this sort of like picture, and then after, that blood will be served on the cup. And these were rituals associated with fertility. And there we see our doggy. Uh, a doggy which is close to his master, which is the supreme leader, the absolute leader. And the dogs were very important in life, and that's why they were also very important in the afterlife. So they were buried with their lords, with their masters. Uh, like this is, for example, the amazing tomb of the Lord of Sipan and his companions. Lord of Sipan was a very important leader uh, during the time of the Mochica culture. And uh, he was buried with all the high rank you can imagine, with lots of gold and lots of silver. He was um, uh, buried also with uh, his, uh, seems that uh, his wives or probably, you know, women that were very important for him, three women that were buried around him who were killed also because they they wanted to go with their Lord to the afterlife. It was an honor to be with or by the side of the Lord in the afterlife and among also soldiers and lamas, two lamas also, we have a dog, un perro, right? Two lamas and one dog right uh, oh i have a question from pam and ellie thanks for your question how are dogs refer go in peru i know spanish is perro yes exactly uh dear pam and ellie in peru because we speak spanish well because of the spanish influence in this territory um we also refer to dogs as perro huh? but remember that in the pre-hispanic times we know that the dogs well were called of course in the indigenous languages you know differently so we have two sort of like synonyms of of the word dog uh, in indigenous languages or at least two that i've been able to to find also in my you know when i was documenting for this event one is biringo and the other one is alco mm -hmm. Um, so here we have also uh, another uh, image, in this case also of the same burial of this Lord of Sipan, and also remember that 
by you know the you know the, the side of this leader we had also a dog right and in a recreation done of of the the men, the Lord of Sipan, you know, alive. We can see also where all the people who participated uh, of this ritual who also, well, they, they wanted to, you know, die for the Lord and go to the afterlife with the dog, right? Um, so, well, basically a dog also was represented. There was a child also who departed to the afterlife with the Lord and the dog. And the idea of the dog also... Uh, as you know being part of these ceremonial uh, let's say chambers where the dead was deposited because in our nowadays context when we die you know we are put in a coffin uh, but uh, in the times before you know the coming the coming of the spanish and mm -hmm. um, the tombs were sort of like portals to the afterlife and um Usually animals were deposited there and the dog was the guide into the afterlife. Can you spell those two words for perro? Yes, Diane, of course. Uh, let me uh, spell uh, in, in English. So alco is A-L-C-O, alco. And biringo is V I R I. N G O. I hope it worked. <laughs> and also talking about the, the importance of the dogs in the in the pre-Hispanic times, not just the moche culture, um, consider the dogs very important. The Nazca people, have you heard about the Nazca lines, amigos? Uh, famous enigmatic lines uh, drawn in the, in the desert. They are huge designs that can be seen only clearly from the air, from, you know, from a plane. One of those lines is the figure of the dog, right? So it has been um, identified as the figure of the dog. Mm -hmm. um, but we know that uh, some pre-Hispanic societies, Although they consider the dogs to be very brave and, and you know, like uh, fighters because uh, dogs were also, you know, fighters uh, and they defended their, their humans, you know, and they were considered sacred and they were guides to the afterlife. There were societies, oh, my dog is here, by the way. <laughs> um, there were societies that um, consider the dogs not just to be divine, there were also food. And we know that some societies, some pre-Hispanic societies, ate dog. We are not sure, you know, like a, 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 what was the intention of eating dog by those ancient societies, but there are some archaeologists uh, that have also researched in, uh, in archaeological contexts in which they have been also found uh, remains of, um, for example, bones of dogs, which have the marks of teeth, of human teeth. So it means that they were consumed, but probably more like, um, you know, a ceremonial type of meat, right? Like to absorb the uh, energy of the dog. Uh, the Incas didn't eat dog, and they considered that to be a very strange tradition, and we know that the Huancas, one of the ancient societies of Peru that existed until the coming of the conquistadors, the Huancas ate dog. So they were sort of like, a, you know, like discriminated a little bit of mistreated by the Incas, seems that from the chronicles, is, uh, some chronicles and some chronies also mentioned that, uh, because they were dog eaters, right? Um, but remember, it's, it's just a matter of, you know, like a, uh, tradition. No? We know that in some parts of the world nowadays, uh, in particular, for example, in Asia, dog is still is being consumed, right? Not anymore in Peru. So we, has, we have here an image of uh, the uh, dogs uh, who were introduced by the conquistadors in the Americas. And we're going to, to check this very briefly. Uh, the Alanos 
uh, Spanish Alanos, uh, a, a variety of dog from Europe, um, a breed of, of Europe, uh, was introduced as perro de guerra or war dog. Uh, uh, and these dogs were very well trained to capture, to catch indigenous. For example, one of the most famous dogs uh, of the Spanish of that first generation of conquistadors is the one called Becerrillo, right? And this is a recreation of Becerrillo, a painting of how Becerrillo probably looked like. And he was very famous for hunting indigenous here in, in, the, in the Americas, in particular in Central America. And also the, the chronicles mentioned that um, he was, Becerrillo was very, very good in distinguishing which ones were the indigenous, you know, like they were the enemies and the indigenous who were conversos, who were converted into Christianity, who were supporting the Spanish. So, well, it's, it's interesting, right? So um, probably, yes, no, they, they could be very, very smart, or there was a way or a trick for, for them to know which ones were the indigenous uh, who were, you know, like uh, fearing. Uh, there probably was more the sense of fear because the dogs feel that. Um, so this is the Alano Español or the Spanish Alano. Uh, and this is a type of bulldog, right? And this uh, dog, you know, that you can see also nowadays it still exists, uh, is a dog that is much bigger, way much bigger than the indigenous dogs of my country, of this territory. Also, we know that the Mexican dogs were very small in comparison to those European uh, dogs. Um, so, to give you also an idea, this is a, a piece of a, of a painting uh, in which you can see also a recreation of how the dogs hunted uh, the, the indigenous. This is an image from uh, Central America. And we know also in Peru, well, it happened the same also. The dogs were feared by the indigenous. And we know also that the Spanish received uh, a very high payment uh, as soldiers, if they had dogs by their side. Uh, so you could have, you know, a, a payment, a set payment as, you know, like a, a soldier or like raso soldier, which is, you know, like just, you know, like a fighting, you know, with, with no horses, with no dogs, you know, you get a payment. You could get more, a higher salary if you had a horse and also a higher salary if you had a dog by your side. This is a Peruvian variety of dog, which is very, very pretty. And I really hope you, you can also give a look to, to these dogs later. Uh, and maybe you do a little research. This is the Peruvian hairless dog. Uh, uh, Julie, a pink dog. Oh, do you mean this, is, this looks pink color to you? Well, it is a little bit pinkish, Julie. It's a little bit pinkish. We have some lighter skin also. I think a uh, brown, you know, like light brown. Um, but they are different kinds also of colors with this dog. But the most important, uh, let's say, element around the dog, this Peruvian hairless dog, is the fact that they don't have hair or they have very little hair. The Peruvian hairless dog was believed uh, to be in the border of extinction. Uh, and uh, but well now is completely recovered, and now we have also this dog even uh, recognized, you know, as as one of the um, indigenous breeds of dogs that you know have to be uh, sort of like promoted uh, their their um, uh, the breed, uh, like a, uh, and they are also in archaeological sites. In every archaeological site, you're going to in Peru, you're going to see a Peruvian hairless hairless dog. Oh, sorry, Julie. No, I have a, a red pink uh, in what you have shown me. Oh, sorry. Uh, maybe I made a, a mistake. It was a typo, probably. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Julie. No, it was not. It was not intended. Uh, um, so. What we are seeing here is a little bit of the description of the uh, dog, the height of the dog uh, in kilograms. It is a very uh, small dog, to be honest, especially in comparison to those big dogs that we saw that were the European ones. Um, and they were 
widely depicted uh, in in many different pottery's uh, uh, made by the Peruvian uh, people before the conquest. Um, also, many people ask me, um, Vanessa, that Peruvian hairless dog looks very similar to the Mexican Xolo dog or Xolo Itzquintle. Uh, that's the name of the Mexican breed of dog that looks very similar to the Peruvian hairless dog. Well, um, they indeed come from the same origin from uh, sort of like there is a, a gen in in the in the uh, let's say in these dogs that cause them uh, being hairless okay and this um, this gen that that they have in common activates in climates which are warm uh, like for example the coast of peru and also the zones where this mexican dog existed in, in Central North America. So in the coast of Peru, we are in a desert. And that's why, um, well, this dog here doesn't need any hair because it's hot in the coast. So uh, that's why also this is a hypoallergenic dog. So <laughs> we, if you have allergies, uh, this dog is perfect for you. But they are not the same dog. Okay, uh, they have different registration numbers also in the International uh, Association of, of Canines of, of Dogs uh, um, that, well, now preserves the different breeds of dogs around the world. Uh -huh. oh, Susan, thanks for helping me also for clarifying, I think. <laughs> Gracias, Susan. So here you have also some um, types of hairless dogs that you can find in the Americas. Uh, there are two of those dogs that you see here, which are Peruvian. This is the Xolo dog from uh, Mexico. And this is the Biringo. Oh, this is the Biringo. Do you remember? Um, I think uh, you were asking me about how is written uh, the word Biringo. So here you have Biringo. And this one here is the crest, the Chinese crested, which is Peruvian too, by the way. Um, and, and they are also, they have this little, little, you know, like a hair coming from the top that is very, very pretty. So these are all American uh, dogs. This is a, a terrier americano. American Terrier. So, and here you can see the Peruvian ones. Look how pretty they are. Uh, they are like ready for an international contest. Uh, um, some of them have a little bit more hair than others, but the gen uh, that creates the lack of uh, the, the hair in most of the body, you know, is a recessive gen that uh, um, all dogs carry but um, when one of the dogs that, this is what I have learned in this investigation, one of your dogs is born with this um, type of, you know, like a, you know, like a condition, you know, of, of being hairless. And if it's born in a place where it's cold, the dog dies. So, you know, and, and that condition uh, is a stop there. Uh, uh, so, but in this territory, because it's warm uh, in the coast of Peru, these um, uh, type of uh, specimens uh, are able to, to grow happy, right? Because they don't need that extra hair. Oh, look at these babies here. Oh, how pretty. Oh, well, they are ugly cute. They are very, very cute to me. But some people say, oh, they are very ugly. Well, I think they are very pretty. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> With that punk there in the head. Gracias, Diane. Thanks for your tips, support, Mia. Gracias. Thank you. Also, we have the Shiribaya Shepherd. This is uh, one species, one breed of dog, endemic dog, uh, that was a shepherd. Uh, it's the only one that we still have. This is wonderful. Uh, so I'm trying to present here at, at the end of this event, um, breeds of dogs that were able to be recovered. Uh, this uh, shepherd is still like in internet, when you look for it, you will find in most of the websites, this dog as extinct. But there is a Peruvian association of, um, let's say, friends of the Peruvian shepherd or the Chiribaya shepherd that they are recovering the dog, right? Um, so this was the variety of dog that was uh, used by Peruvians in the Andes to, uh, let's say, to, to keep 
in order, you know, like uh, uh, the alpacas and the llamas. Mm -hmm. uh, so they were specialized in alpacas and llamas. And they are not very tall, by the way. Uh, I've seen the, the shepherds in, in other parts of the world being very, very tall animals. They are quite petite. Uh, and here you can see a mummy of a Chiribaya shepherd. Uh, a, and this mummy is very old. It must be from the 14th century. So to give you an idea uh, how sometimes the mummies, how well preserved can be, right? So we can see here the Chiribaya shepherd and a mummy of the Chiribaya shepherd, right? Um, we also know of a variety of dog that was called Alco. So you know already... This is the other word, by the way, alco and biringo, right? Um, so the the word alco was used to refer to the dogs, right, in Quechua. But also some chronicles mentioned that there were dogs that also that their, their type, their breed was called alco. And these were dogs uh, that were uh, small, like uh, lap dogs, and they were also a uh, black. There was a type of dog that was black, furry and black. And here we can see uh, a painting uh, from a chronist uh, that well, was able to portray a lady of, of the pre-Hispanic times, a woman, you know, that in the traditional clothing and with a doggy by her side. So how, how cute, right? How, how pretty. <laughs> but those alco dogs um, are gone. And the reason is because when the Spanish introduced the Catholic religion, they introduced um, the, the fight against the Catholic, uh, you know, like, sorry, against the indigenous traditions, uh, indigenous religion, uh, the extirpation of idolatries is how we call it. And because the belief was that the black dogs were the ones who took people to the afterlife. So they wanted to get rid of the cult to, to the, you know, afterlife, to the cult, to, to the dead. And the way they did it was killing black dogs. And this is documented. So there was a massacre of black dogs in the Andes to avoid that tradition to continue. And also that's the time in which the alco dog um, disappeared. Uh, we have here also a very strange type of dog. This is the short-eared dog from the jungle. Here you can see also his uh, scientific name. And this dog maybe doesn't look like a dog. What type of animal do you, do you think he looks like? Um, well, to me, it's like a still strange to, to see, you know, the dog side, but we're going to do a little close up to, to the doggy and look at here, for example, the locations in which you can find this dog. This is a canine, is a dog, by the way. Yes, an opossum. Yes, he, he looks like that, right? <laughs> and, but it's a dog. It's a dog. And it's one of the species of dogs that um, was able to escape from the European dogs and the diseases of the European dogs because, well, it live in the jungle. So um, this is the reason why, uh, well, the dog continues existing nowadays. Um, but uh, there still is a, f a fear of the possibility that they could be also, you know, like a, a rich by, by diseases, new diseases, like rabies, for example, diseases of that kind, or just like little flus that the dog have that could, you know, kill mass populations of dogs. So that's why um, those dogs are also protected. Mm -hmm. See, it looks like a cross of a cat and a dog. Yes, Pam, I think it's, it's a really cute doggy. Like, look at this this image here. Isn't it cute? Uh, and, and also I saw this other like a drawing in the internet of an indigenous child from the from the jungle carrying his doggy. So just to to have an idea you know how um, you know it, it could be, you know, this this also connection between people from the jungle and their dogs, endemic dogs over there. So that is species, uh, that is species is um, you know not extinct, but it is uh, in danger. Right. And um, so it is her duty, of course, to take care of those dogs, to be able to um, maybe give it a follow up. So how the situation is of the dog, uh, of these dogs, and also, if possible, promote the breeds of these endemic dogs. And um, so, well, I, I am very happy that you were able to to today learn a little bit more about the endemic dogs of Peru. 
Uh, and if you wish to know more about my events, you can also follow me on my website, besides also here on Hago. It will be a pleasure to, to have you also in my future events. I do tours about history. I do tours uh, uh, also like in the city. Uh, I do city tours, all kinds of events you, you can imagine, uh, cooking shows. And um, so if you wish also to see my upcoming events, please follow uh, my Hago channel. Uh, you can also visit my website. There you can see also, um, you know, articles I'm writing. I have uh, one book there available. It's a booklet about legends of Peru, of ancient Peru. It is for free. So you can go there and download it. Um, and well, if you wish me to cover all the topics, all the themes, just let me know, send me a message, you know, leave me here a, a comment, uh, or maybe at the end, you can help me commenting about the event if you like it. You can also support this channel if you wish, if you have the economy to do it with a tip, uh, the tips, not just support guides, also Hago in particular, and by supporting Hago, like with a tip, uh, you can also help Hago to continue a free, um, website also in that way everybody can join the events and also you can help us um well content creators and tour guides to continue creating for you all so thank you so 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 much for coming Kari, muah, gracias gracias querida thank you <laughs> thank you i hope you enjoy the the event also if you wish to support this uh channel a little bit more you can become a sponsor uh to this channel you can sponsor any of your favorite channels with ten dollars per month and in reward i am uh, going to give you my spanish classes i am creating Spanish classes for my sponsors on Zoom uh, and also a couple of books that I'm writing too. So, well, if you wish to support as a sponsor, also you can go to my profile on Hago. Take care. Muchas gracias, amigos. See you soon. And until the next time. Gracias, Catalina. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Best to you all. Peace and love. Chao, chao, amigos. Bye-bye. See you soon.